Did you, uh, so now your nonprofit though, what's the name of your nonprofit again? Triple R Ministries. Triple R Ministries. Stands for Renaissance Refuge Ranch. It's a ranch and it's a place of refuge for kids in need of services. And the aviation part of that is, talk a little bit about that, how the aviation piece is going to work and what you'll do for the kids there from an aviation perspective, I think. Well, the first part about it is the, uh, I don't know if you've seen the market right now, but the market is begging for more hangar space. Um, you have waiting lists at both most places for T hangers and for any hangar space. So the idea is if we end up getting some T hangers put in there and allow people on a private strip to place their planes there, a place they can come in and out of, plus any monies they pay toward their dues are going to a 501c3. Now we have a self-sustaining aspect of the ministry. Okay, that's right. And that's what we were moving toward. With the 230 acres and the natural airstrip that's there, when they get us approved, that will allow us the opportunity to uh, invite pilots to come in. And while they're coming in, they're actually helping kids that are in need. Okay. Which is a good sales point. I mean, yeah, you already have pilots that want a, a tea hanger anyway, <clears throat> but when they know that they can get a tea hanger, and support um, kids, okay. especially in the foster. That's a great system. idea. It's a really great idea. And how many T hangers total do you think you'll end up with? Yeah. The first engineering aspect of it has actually shown. Uh, I want to say it's thirty-two because it's sixteen and sixteen, so thirty-two. Okay. Wow. That's a lot. That's huge. Mm -hmm. Now, when you saw the property, when we drove. And we turned and started going down the runway. Mm -hmm. When I started accelerating, over on the right-hand side, there's enough space because we own all of that field continuing going east before you get to the pine. Okay. He was going to put a long line of hangers there on that side that would allow access. Mm -hmm. Which, of course, then getting over there, he was trying to draw to where he would have the aspect of the accessing the tea hangers without crossing the runway. So 182 again, so you landed, you had full flaps. Tell us again about what, how this happened. <laughs> um, I, am, I was a uh, one fourth owner of the 182 in Big Sky Flight. Mm -hmm. um, I was heading over to Elsinore, which is right near Robertsdale, okay. Robertsdale, yep. Alabama. I was picking up some chemicals from a, a guy over there. I had done my weather checks, my pre-flights. Uh, I even had called and talked to, got permission from the private airstrip at Elsinore. Um, knew yeah. what strip was, even looked at it on Google Earth so that I could see how they had their strip set up. They used to have two, but uh, they reduced it down to one, which is basically the east-west. I flew over there, uh, real good flight, beautiful day. I checked the uh, uh, METAR at uh, Pensacola and knew where I was, knew what kind of weather we had. I overflew the, the strip, saw their windsock. It was coming a little bit out of the east, so I went ahead and uh, actually flipped that. It was coming out of the west. And I did the pattern, uh, a left pattern, mm -hmm. came down, and I was purposely just going to do a low flyby just to look. Right. I did my low flyby, looked at the, they had the trees on either ends, I flew around. There was a tower to the south, and so I did not like the left pattern. Okay. There was nobody around, so I went ahead and pulled the right pattern, um, came around. I knew that I had to get really, really slow because of the trees. I thought I had dropped down slow enough. I was doing about, it was about 54, 55, right before a stall. I know it was yeah. real close. Okay. And, but I was coming down with enough um, decel and enough angle of attack to come up through the trees. And then I, I started to flare. It floated much longer than I thought. I didn't know this until I looked on my tracking. Yeah. But I floated to about midfield. Okay. And literally floated before I hit. When I hit, then I realized it was dew still on the ground. Oh, no wow. breaking. Okay, grass strip. But by the time I was midfield, 
and I had already bled off almost all of my speed, I also knew there was no way that I could take off and yeah. clear the trees at the other end. Okay. And when I checked the POH after the accident, I was right. I yeah. knew that I didn't have enough uh, distance. 1,400 feet is what I needed to, to clear that 50 foot obstacle. Yeah. I didn't have it. So I went ahead and I had full aft and I went ahead and had a full left rudder to try and steer it from jumping the road. There was a road at the okay. end. It turned just enough, and when it hit a culvert, it dead stopped. Oh, wow. Okay. My passenger said, my last words were to him, he said, you said, prepare for an abrupt stop. <laughs> so you had someone on board with you? I did. Okay. And everybody was okay? Everybody was okay. Make sure there was no fuel leaking from the plane. Everything was off. Um, then I checked my passenger, got out what I needed out of the plane, and then the next thing I did is I looked in the mirror <laughs> in my phone, and I saw that I had all this blood coming from my nose and my uh, mouth. One of the guys that pulled up, he said, you need to go to the emergency room. And I said, we're not going anywhere until I got everything <laughs> taken care of. Um, and then I did. I left the plane, uh, headed to uh, ER. They sewed me back up had eight stitches. When I came back, the uh, county sheriff's department was there. Oh, really? And yeah. they said, why'd you leave? And I said, uh, I was getting medical yeah. treatment. Well, why didn't you call us? And I didn't argue with him, but I have no legal obligation no. to call the county sheriff's department. And you know department. that because you're an attorney. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and and I, I said, listen, the first thing I did is I called an attorney friend of mine. Why'd you do that? I said, because he's an aviation attorney and I knew he'd tell me what I needed to do. Yeah. And it wasn't to call you guys. Mm -hmm. I called, uh, knew that I was gonna need to call the FTSB, but we have that uh, 10 days to file that. Yeah. Uh, the Sheriff's Department actually called the uh, um, FAA, NTSB came out there, I chatted with them. He said, because of the buckled fuselage, it was not gonna be an incident, but an accident. Okay. Uh, had I not buckled the fuselage, okay. he could have uh, been an incident. Been an incident. Okay. But, well, so that was a learning experience, no doubt. Oh, yeah. So what would you do? So how, how would you do it differently next time? I wouldn't believe it. Yeah, okay. You know, with a 182 on a grass no, stretch that's 2,400 feet, yeah, there's no reason to push it. Right. I could have gone right over to Robertsdale. Um, you know, had I been in the Kit Fox, no problem. Right. But in a 182 on a grass strip, yeah. It was, it was pilot error. Yeah. And I told the NTSB guy, he actually complimented, he said everything he did, everything was good, two exceptions. You didn't need to land there, and you didn't need to pull up your flaps. Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh. Yeah, they, they throw in their autopilot, they get up there and they just cruise. I hate doing that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I would rather fly even, you know, if I'm going eight hours, yes, I can see an autopilot, and I'm gonna take some breaks in there, of course, but, um, I am putting an autopilot in this plane, but I love the kit box for purposes of just flying. Okay. Yeah, it's a great little engine. While it has the red covers, it is in fact the uh, 912 ULS, so it's 100 horsepower with the Rotax. Um, I've ripped out the entire panel. The, go ahead. You're updating the avionics, right? Yes. We are going with a brand new panel. We're going with the all glass. We're going with the, uh, Vertical power, which is going to be the digital or a computerized uh, circuit breakers. Okay. And two G3Xs. Uh, G5 is a backup with its own backup uh, battery power supply. And a autopilot, a Garmin uh, 245 uh, comms or communication. And then I have remote comms and radio. So when you look at the panel, yeah. Um, <coughs> The G3 on the left, G3 on the right, and the reason I did that is I fly both seats. I didn't want to have the issue where I'm always looking over to the yeah, left. Okay. So I put one in both sides. Um, a little more expensive, yes, but I like the idea that I have it on both sides and I can fly right seat whenever I want to. Okay. And you're building power yourself? I'm, I did. All of it sitting over there. Oh, yeah. So I'll have two G3 units oh, on the other side. Yeah, that's going to be beautiful. 
And they're doing the cutouts for your panel up there, right? Correct. I'm okay. sending that panel up to Stein and they're doing the full cutout. That's the, it's cut it off the top, but that's the panel. So you, did you, who, who designed, who did I designed this? this? You did this and yeah. then sent it to those guys. And I sent it up to Stein Air. Okay. And he is, uh, he's gonna fine tune and make sure that I'm even. And then he's building me the mounting bracket to the back of the uh, um, panel, you know, where he'll have the um, angle yeah. aluminum and then my racks for where I can slide on these units. That's crazy. And then once it's in, you'll have an A&P sign off on everything that you're doing. Well, everything I do at each step, okay. while I don't have to, I'm having my avionics guy, Tommy. Okay, got it. Tommy's coming and watching behind me because he's actually done avionics. Okay, okay. Then my AP and the avionics guy, once it's in the plane, yep. they're going to help me do all the testing okay. and all the checking. And then you also have to figure your center of gravity and your oh, yeah. balance. You do? Okay. Because I took out 16 pounds. I'm going back in, believe it or not, with 18 pounds. Really more. Okay. Uh, which surprised me as well. It, really it, it does have a few other upgrades. It's giving a new tail wheel with a baby bush wheel. That's the old tail wheel on the ground. That's the uh, new T3, which is a much nicer uh, for our um, off-field landings. And then I have the Alaskan baby bush wheel. I put, I have a totally new windscreen, a new turtle deck um, that will also be going on there. Okay. That's a Zenith, and that is, uh, Billy is, Billy White, uh, Swan Aviation, is rebuilding that. I shouldn't say rebuilding. It, it has never flown before. He bought it as a kit. Um, the guy was working on it. He stopped. So Bill, it's Billy's project, and he's come a long way. His goal is to finish this plane and send it down to South America for um, a missionary down there to use for getting in and out of the bush. I forgot that. So, uh, so Swan, I think you told us a little bit about what Swan does, but how many planes do they operate? What are they operating for and where do they operate and all that? Well, Swan is primarily a uh, support for missionary aviators. They uh, recently, the one I told you about that landed here, yeah, was right. a missionary pilot uh, taking a 172 needed it refurbished, okay. repainted, and uh, go back on the mission field. They landed it here, Billy did the work, they built the paint shop for that, okay. um, took care of getting the plane done, and then they packaged it up and sent it out to be reassembled at an airstrip and then flown away. So he trailer, flew it in and trailered it out, and he's clearly used to landing places where... Well, he's an airline yeah. pilot. Uh, okay. I still, when we chatted, um, I was of course thinking, oh yeah, you can land him. Um, but when I saw where he landed, yeah. I'd never do it. Yeah. I wouldn't even do it with Kit Fox. No. So, it's crazy. But now the Zenith, from what I understand, the way they're designed, you actually pull that front wheel off and you see how it's got the slope. Right. And you can wheelie down the runway in the bush for a short field takeoff, get into ground effect and take off. And they're very light little planes. Uh, uses a similar gear to the Kit Fox with that Grove aluminum. That's crazy. And these are the wings? Yes, sir. Okay. The wings. 